Greetings, eco nerdlings. In this podcast, we're going to be discussing demographics. Let's get started. So we're going to be examining the demographics of specific countries. And if you remember from the previous podcast, demographics is looking at different types of statistics like population size, how many females versus males, ethnic groups, as well as income, uh, gross domestic per capita, that type of thing. So we're going to start out by looking at some developing countries. And if you remember, developing countries are those that are going to have um, poorer people in them. They're not going to have as many um, medical advances that we have currently in the United States. They're going to have lower education rates, much higher birth rates. They're also going to have higher death rates. Not many people you're going to see surviving into their 70s or their 80s. So the largest developing country currently is China. However, in recent years, basically about the last 40 years, China has taken drastic measures to decrease its population. The second largest country is India, and we actually think that India is going to surpass China in population growth by the year of 2050. So we also have Pakistan as well as Iran and Ethiopia that are also huge developing countries that contribute to the world population. Russia used to be one of the big players in developing countries contributing to the population, but because of really bad environmental factors as well as hyperinflation, crime, corruption, uh, disease, and you know despair, up to 600,000 people per year are emigrating out of Russia into other countries. So it's not going to be one of the big contributors anymore. So slowing population growth in India and China. So for more than five decades now, India has tried to control the population growth, but it only has modest success. So they haven't really been very successful in decreasing their population, and there are many factors that contribute to that that we'll discuss a little bit later. However, China has been the exact opposite. It's had a huge success in controlling its population and actually decreasing the population growth drastically in the last 40 years. So they started a family plan in the 1970s, and it's used government-enforced program to cut its birth rate in half, and it sharply reduced its fertility rate as well. So looking at this, this is a percent of the world population taken in 2006, and it's showing you what percent is contributed by India and China. So as you see, India is in blue and China is in yellow. So India contributes 17% of the entire world population in 2006. China contributed 20% of the entire world population in 2006. So in 2006, India had a population of 1.1 billion, while China had a population of 1.3 billion. And then in 2050, these are the projected growths uh, with India having 1.4 billion and China having 1.6 billion. Now, one thing I want you guys to look at is the rate or percentage of adults that are illiterate, meaning they cannot read or write. So in India, they have almost 50% or half of all of the people that live there who cannot read and they cannot write. Whereas China only has about a 17% illiteracy rate. So that's one of the things that makes living in a country like the United States so amazing is that everybody has access to free public education. So everyone in the United States should be able to read and write, or at least they have the opportunity for that. Whereas in places such as India, you're not going to be presented with opportunities to learn how to read and write or go to a public education like you do here in the United States. Um, right now, the population that's under the age of 15 in India, again, pretty large, 36% uh, of their population is under the age of 15. China has about 20% of their population under the age of 15. Uh, population growth rates, you guys can read those. Uh, fertility rate, so in India we have a 2.9 children fertility rate per woman. So that means that the population is still growing. So the woman gives birth to, we'll say, almost three children. So it's a net gain of almost one child per couple added to that population. Whereas in China, they have a 1.6 fertility rate, which means that population should actually be decreasing because we're not going to have enough children to actually replace the two parents who created them. 
we have an infant mortality rate of over 50% in India. So that should give you an idea of the type of conditions that are there. Uh, very poor medical care would lead to the infant mortality rate. And that's also why women typically have a lot more children there because they know their children aren't going to live to a very, um, to a very long age. Life expectancy in India is about 62 years, while in China it is 70 years, and the percent living uh, below $2 a day. So in India, over 80%. So that is a huge number of people that are living on less than $2 a day. So if you think about it and you, know, you go out to McDonald's or something, $2 is going to get you, what, maybe a, a large order of fries or a cheeseburger or something like that, um, and that's it. So $2 a day, 47% in China. And then the gross domestic product per capita, we talked about that early. And remember, it's not the family income. It's how much that country makes off of, you know, agricultural products, you know, exports, oil, anything, textiles per capita. And remember, we talked about how once that number hits 4,000, that people typically level off and they'll be living up into their 70s. But when we hit that magic 4,000 mark, that's when the life expectancy typically goes up. So you see that here with China. Uh, China, the per capita is about 5,800, whereas India is about 3,100, and their percent, uh, excuse me, their life expectancy is going to be much lower than that of China's. So India's family planning program failed for many different reasons. First of all, they had poor planning to begin with. They didn't really have a concrete plan that said, this is what's going to happen. This is what we're going to do about it. This is what we're going to deal with. This is how we're going to deal with it. Uh, there was a lot of bureaucratic inefficiency, same thing, poor planning. Uh, they have a very low view of women in India. So women aren't held to a very high status. Uh, they live in extreme poverty and they lack administrative financial support. So meaning they didn't have the money to put into this program to get it started. So they might have said, um, I know a big push was to get women sterilized, but if they didn't have enough money to do that, that plan couldn't really be successful. So that's one of the contributing factors. Uh, they also had a disagreement over the best ways to actually slow population growth. So again, you know, should the woman get sterilized? Should the man get sterilized? Should we have some type of rule of, you know, they can only have one child or two child, uh, two children. And after that, you know, is there a punishment if they have, you know, more than one child? So those were all things that kind of came into play with India's planning, uh, family planning program, as well as why it failed. So China was the exact opposite. They had a very, very successful family planning program. So between the years of 1972 to 2000, China actually dropped its birth rate by over 50%. That is huge. They had an extremely, extremely, extremely strict and efficient family planning program. And when I say strict, I mean there were huge consequences if you had more than one child or you did something you weren't supposed to. So they implemented that you could only have one child per couple. They also added little caveats here and there. So if your first child was female, you did have the option to have a second child and try for a male. Um, they also you know, made it very uh, strict as far as who could marry, the age that you got to marry at. So there was a lot of things that went on in China that contributed to their decrease in the population growth. And those were also very controversial as well. They gave big incentives to families that followed this family planning program such as food, they gave them pensions. They also would guarantee that their children, or child, I should say, would get free medical care as well as free school tuition. They did have severe punishments though. So if someone had more than one child, uh, they could undergo mandatory sterilization, fines. A lot of people that went against the government and had more children would actually lose their jobs. So currently, China's total fertility rate, that's what TFR up here stands for, total fertility rate, is about 1.6 children per woman. So again, that's going to be less than two children per couple, which means their population should be decreasing. And China has moved over 300 million people out of poverty because of this program. It's not without its problems, though, like I said before. There is an extremely large push towards a male preference, meaning that people want to have a male child instead of a female child. So unfortunately, this leads to a lot of less than 
um, legal happenings when it comes to giving birth to a female girl. Uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of instances when families will actually kill their own child because they do not want that baby girl. They wanted a baby boy. A lot of them will leave them at orphanages and hope that somebody will adopt them because they don't want a girl, they want a boy to pass on the family name and to get a good job so they can help contribute uh, to the family again. Uh, there's not enough resources to actually support the population in China. So even though the government guaranteed all of these wonderful things, um, unfortunately, there weren't quite enough resources to go around. And one of the big problems with the one child uh, family plan is that when the couples had a girl and they actually kept the girl, a lot of the times that girl wouldn't get the, um, you know, the promised free education or help with food and stuff like that. So there was, again, a very strong push towards males having the preference. Uh, excuse me. Uh, developed countries such as the United States, they don't usually have such population problems like that. Um, we hold people equally, so it doesn't matter the race, uh, religion, or sex, meaning, you know, male or female. Everybody's kind of on equal grounds in America, unlike other countries where there's a huge push for, you know, males being, you know, more dominant than females and having the better, higher paying positions and that type of thing. So you don't see that as much in developed countries as you do in developing countries. Well, that's it for this discussion. So if you'd like to rewatch this video or find more videos on AP Environmental Science as well as AP Biology, you can go to my website at www.nerdlingscience.com. This is the Queen Nerdling signing off. Stay nerdy until next time.